Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League, Superman number one. It's pretty much an F you, a middle finger to anybody that is set out there. You know what? I think Brian Michael Bennis at DC Comics made a mistake by aging up John Kent. We wanted to see Clark Kent raise John up, you know, through his teenage formative years instead of aging him from like 12 to 19 or 10 to 7, whatever it was. Aging him up was a bad idea in the opinion of a lot of DC Comics fans, including this guy right here. So they said, you know what? You keep asking for it. We're going to give you the worst possible result possible. We're going to put Tom King on a book, call it Dark Crisis Worlds Without a Justice League Superman, and basically let you know that you can go to hell. They're saying, oh, you want a DH John Kent? We'll give you a DH John Kent. We'll let you see Clark Kent and Lois Lane raise John Kent as a teenager, and it's going to be the worst interpretations of the characters of Clark Kent and Lois Lane I've ever seen in my life. I can't imagine anyone getting the voices of the characters worse. I think the Superman in Injustice might be, might be more heroic than the Superman in this goddamn comic book. And if you come in here thinking, well, this is actually just going to explore the world without the Justice League. Though we got all the main characters gone. What would the world be like without Superman? That must be the point of the comic book. You kind of interpret it from the name Dark Crisis Worlds Without a Justice League Superman Special. That is not what this is. Like I said, it is an FU. It is DC Comics and their editorial staff using Tom King to tell you to go to hell with your stupid critiques and your opinions about John Kent being DH. Be careful what you wish for because now you've got it. And this thing is absolutely awful. I hated every fucking page of this comic book. And yes, he does sort of bring it home with a somewhat touching moment at the end. But by then, the entire comic book story was pretty much spoiled. It was ruined because you brought in a professional character assassin to go in there and do the deed and let people like Tevye, Dillon, and all the Superman fans out there know that DC Comics could care less what you think about John Kent because this is where you're getting. Let's get into it. This story is actually quite stupid. It's Tom King writing Chris Burnham on art. If you like Chris Burnham, you're going to like the way this is illustrated. If you don't, you won't. I think it's perfectly fine for what the story that they're trying to tell here. We have Frank Kaminsky as the editor. And I think he should get the overwhelming majority of blame for this very bad comic book coming out and this terrible interpretation of Clark Kent and Lewis Lane as parents. Frank Kaminsky, this one's all on you, dickhead. You brought in the assassin, and shockingly, he decided to kill the characters. And basically, we just get chapters of John Kent's life as he's growing up from 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So basically, you get all the years that were skipped out on by Brian Michael Bendis. And we get in, guess what? Lois and Clark are terrible parents, specifically Lois in the 13-year-old story. Turns out some people are in trouble. They need John Kent to go in and help his father out. John Kent is having trouble finding his superhero uniform, and he's asking Lois for help. And this is how she talks to her son. Check out the voice on this Lois Lane. Does this feel authentic to you? You didn't put your mask with your suit. It's wherever you left it. If you want me to wash it, you have to leave them together. Where'd you last see it? I'm not going to search the damn house. John, I'm on a deadline. I work for a living. Well, look by the door. As you can see, she's shouting at him. Maybe. Maybe it's under the couch. Am I the one with x-ray eyes? You're going to be late. People literally could die. What a terrible interpretation of Lois Lane. And then we see John Kent apparently is Robin now. I have no idea why they decided to do this. I imagine it was artistic interpretation. But in Tom King's mind, Superboy is Robin. Whatever, man. Your Batman suck, and your take on Superman is equally bad. We get into year 14. John is having very bad dreams. He's screaming and crying because he's hearing these voices. He's hearing screams of children dying, basically in the fourth world with Darkseid and all this stuff. And apparently, Clark Kent has been hearing this the entire time. This is what his father, Superman, the greatest superhero that's ever lived, has had to say about it. It happens. Not every day, but once in a while. And it's horrible. And you have to do your best not to let it, you know, hurt you. There's nothing we can do. If I could, I'd do it. I swear. And his son says, but you're Superman. And I'm Superboy. We save people. It's what we have to do. And this is what Superman, the greatest hero in DC Comics history, scratch that in the history of comic books, had to say about that. You don't think I tried, son? You don't think I've nearly died trying? But there's only one of me. And there's a whole universe of hate up there. It took some hard lumps, but I learned this is the best we can do, providing sanctuary and peace here on Earth. So apparently Clark Kent Superman is turning a blind eye to mass murder of children going on in the galaxy because he's scared of Darkseid. 
Does that sound like Superman to you? Like I said, this is DC Comics using Tom King to let John Kent fans know you can go screw yourself. This is the interpretation that you're going to get. What a just bastardization of the characters of Lois Lane and Clark Kent right off the bat. I just I couldn't believe it. I can't believe Frank Kaminsky and the editorial staff at DC Comics let this thing go through. It's absolutely abhorrent, in my opinion. Next, we see John Kent at age 15, and he has snuck off to Ran. He only left a text message for his mother and obviously super red. Clark Kent needs to go check up on him, make sure that he's okay. John is trying to do the right thing in a war zone. Clark says, we're coming home. And look at his fist. Doesn't it look like Superman wants to beat his son with his bare fist right there? That's the way I interpret that panel. It's one of the most disgusting pages in Superman comic book history. In my opinion, this isn't injustice. This isn't Red Sun. This isn't some weird else world where Superman's gone bad. This is supposedly what would have happened if John Kent wouldn't have gotten aged up. That's the story they're telling you, and they absolutely drive that home at the end, and I'm going to show that to you. This is what Superman, who's ready to beat his son, says, John, now is not the time for debate. You have just shattered a truce made years before you were born. Right now, Darkseid is deploying his armada of death like the billion planets before it. Earth will soon face crisis. We will go home. We will make our stand, and we will defend our family. After I punch you in the face with my fist. I can't, like, I still can't believe Tom King wrote this. I can't believe Chris Burnham illustrated it. And I'm very shocked DC Comics editorial let this thing go through. When John is 17, he's finally had enough of the voices. He's heard too many children dying at night. And he decides he's going to go up to fourth world without his father. He's going to confront the new gods himself. And he's going to save the children. He shows up. Apparently he's been beaten to a bloody pulp. Clark finds him at the door and lays him down. This is another thing that Tom Taylor's been putting into his Superman Son of Kal-El series. And here you have Tom King putting it into his uh, Dark Crisis Superman special thing that they've got here that Clark Kent Superman doesn't do enough and John Kent will be better because John Kent, because he wasn't scared like his dad, Clark Kent. He was an actual hero. Unlike Superman, he went to fourth world and he decided he was going to save those children and he was able to do it. He stood up to the barbarians on that world and he saved the children, which his father claimed was absolutely impossible. Absolute character assassination on the part of Tom King, which we've seen time and time and time and time again. And this time we're getting it on Clark Kent. First, it was Bruce Wayne. Then it was Wally West. Then it was Mr. Terrific. We've got Guy Gardner, Martian Manhunter, Selena Kyle. How many other characters is Tom King going to be allowed to destroy in the DC Comics universe? just so he can tell a weird, angsty, very cynical, shitty story using the worst type of negative fanfic versions of these characters you could ever dream of. I can't believe DC Comics still thinks this guy is a talent. I can't believe DC Comics still pay Tom King money to destroy their characters. And that's what he does every single time. Nobody delivers at DC Comics quite like Tom King. They know exactly what they're getting, and he gives it to them every single time. This is what they want. They want him destroying Clark Kent. They want him destroying Lois Lane. They want him destroying Wally West. They want him destroying Bruce Wade and every other character he can get his hands on. Absolutely shocking. But of course, it's a Tom King story. So people are going to say, well, you forgot the end, Wes. Oh, I didn't forget the end. Is that the end? John's time on Earth is up. He's going to go out into the galaxy. He's going to go start saving people like his father, Clark Kent, was unwilling to do. He says, you know what, Dad? You stay here on Earth and you can protect the Earth. I'm going to go protect everyone else. I'm going off to war. Was it a little bit heartwarming to see this moment here at the end? Absolutely. But I remember every single page and every bit of character destruction that happened to Clark Kent and Lois Lane on the way to here. You don't get a free pass because you throw in one nice shot at the end after you destroy two characters that are far more important to DC Comics than Tom King will ever be. But we do get a nice tender moment as his dad sees him off. He's going off to intergalactic war and he's going to save people. So we do get a somewhat tender moment here at the end. And then we get the confirmation that this is apparently how Clark Kent thinks John Kent's upbringing would have went had he not been aged up by Brian Michael Bendis. They're talking about raising a teenager, talking about how it's a living hell. And he says, you're right, hon, every word. And I wouldn't trade any of it. I was there, Lois. I was here. I saw him. I got to see him grow into the man he had to be. I didn't miss it this time. Obviously saying, I missed it last time when Brian Michael Bendis aged up the character for no reason. What does this comic book have to do with Dark Crisis? I don't know and I don't care. Dark Crisis has been very disappointed at this point. 
The Dark Crisis regular series aren't all that good. Justice League 75 is very average. Flash was okay, I guess, but Dark Crisis Young Justice is abysmal. And this is also abysmal. I'll give it like two out of five, maybe. And I feel like I'm being far too generous. It's probably more like a 1.5 out of five. The art is perfectly fine. There's a nice moment on the way out. But otherwise, this this comic book is awful. It's terrible. It's exactly what you would expect from Tom King at DC Comics nowadays. And there's a backup story from Brandon Thomas with FICO OCO art, who I think is a terrific artist. He should be doing one of their ongoings or something. Unfortunately, he's on an Aquaman story. I am Brandon Thomas Aquaman out. I am not dipping my toe back into that pond ever again. Brandon Thomas had his chance, and he's absolutely flubbed it. No one will buy an Aquaman comic anymore because his story's been terrible. So I did not read the backup. If you want to tell me it's good, I'll have to take your word for it. I am judging this based on the merit of what they said they were selling me. Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League, Superman had nothing to do with Dark Crisis, had nothing to do with the world without a Justice League, and it certainly had nothing to do with Superman. That was not Clark Kent. That was not Superman. That was a weird bastardized version that wants to hit his kid will just stay on Earth while everyone else dies around the world, little kids dying all over the place. Some of the worst takes on Superman I've ever seen in my life. And DC Comics paid the guy to do it. Also, terrible takes on Lois Lane. That's the first character he destroyed in this comic book. But at this point, it's kind of what you expect. I still say that the character assassination of Mr. Terrific is worse. If you don't know what that is, it happened during his Strange Adventures story. This was absolutely repulsive, in my opinion. And just uh, just really tells you about the character and the kind of writer Tom King is. Absolutely terrible. If you don't know what it is, check this out. I think you'll be surprised.